Welcome to the SEI podcast series, a production of Carnegie Mellon University's Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the Department of Defense and operated at Carnegie Mellon University. A transcript of today's podcast is available at sei.cmu.edu forward slash podcasts. My name is Eileen Rubel, and I'm the initiative lead for the Agile and Government Practice here at the SEI. Joining me today are Tim Morrow and Don Fotz, who are both researchers here at the SCI. Today, they're here to talk about best practices for security and cloud computing. This is the second of a two-part podcast focused on their work in cloud computing. Welcome, Don and Tim. Thank you very much, Eileen, for having us here. Yes, thank you, Eileen. I'm glad you could join me. I'd like to start by having each of you talk briefly about your backgrounds. Uh, what have you done um, here at the SCI, at CMU, and uh, prior to your arrival with us? Okay. Well, I've been here 15 years now at the SEI. This is Tim. And um, I've focused mostly on system to systems type of work. I'm an architect and tried to, to be able to get early impact on the life cycle programs where we can make an impact. And uh, before I came to the SEI, I'm a hardware software engineer where I did a lot of work working with um, nuclear reactors for the Navy. Hi, it's Don. Uh, before joining SCI, I spent about 20 years as a cybersecurity architect helping U.S. government organizations address their cybersecurity challenges. Just before coming to SEI, I was at the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence developing security solutions for industrial control systems that are used by electric utilities. Great. Uh, today we're here to talk about best practices in cloud computing. Uh, in our earlier podcast, we talked about risks, threats, and vulnerabilities in moving to the cloud. Uh, what's the current state of cloud computing and why is this an interest for you both right now? Okay, well, it's changing a lot. We're, we have a lot of interaction with customers now where they're moving to the cloud, but we're seeing also that it's a very dynamic area. So we're seeing new features being added to the cloud, specifically in areas of like IA and machine learning, you know, the assistants like Alexa, uh, different things with um, IoT and serverless computing. So there's a lot of new services and features coming along that we need to help our customers with. I think another thing that while we're developing these papers, this paper was to help IT staffs that are typically very small with these organizations. So you want to provide some guidance and we're not seeing very clear guidance out there in the market. And then the last thing, from my point of view, is we always run into where customers just get so overwhelmed with these problems. And it's like, we want to provide a way to help them understand how to get started in this. What's a good way to do that? Okay. Tom? So I think cloud computing um, provides an enormous opportunity for, for businesses and governments. It's a demonstration of the economic principle of specialization. Somebody takes over a function. So the cloud service provider s focuses on one aspect of something running information technology. So now your business doesn't have to stand up a data center, buy hardware, and configure it. You buy that as a service, and you can focus more on running your business or your mission, which is really what it's all about. The downside to this is that you are trusting business assets to some other entity, the cloud right. service provider. And people have a difficult time overcoming the trust barrier uh, with respect to handing over that information since it, it could conceivably damage your business if it was lost. Large organizations seem to have done a good job. They have a lot of resources to apply, but small and mid-sized organizations seem to struggle. And so the best practices paper is targeted at helping these organizations understand the things they can do to address risks and threats and develop trust in outsourcing parts of their IT operation to cloud service providers. Okay. Um, and in a recent SEI blog post, you outlined some of these best practices that organizations should be using. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about them? Right. So one of the first ones we talked about is performing due diligence. We mentioned that in the earlier podcast that we did, that um, there's we're going to highlight four areas here in this discussion. And one is to make use of a cloud adoption framework. So there's so many different cloud providers out there. If you're a government organization, they have FedRAMP that gives mm -hmm. them a list of 100 different ones they could choose from. And so it's hard to figure out which one. 
but we found that if you go with one of the big three, they have a lot of extensive documentation for how to do adoption into the cloud, as well as there's a number of good third parties out there. So, but developing a framework kind of leads you to understand what all you need to do to move to the cloud. Your transition is important, so we recommend that. I think the training is a big one. A lot of times people think that I have, peop I have IT staff that I can develop, I do VMs and I can set them up in my network. But when you put that up in the cloud, the security is very different. And so you need to have the training for them, your staff, to understand what it takes to do it safely. And I think that's a key part of that. Uh, the security is not the same in terms of a perimeter for your network. A lot of times people are slowly catching on that it's, it's not a fence up protecting me. And especially when I go to the cloud, everything's accessible via the internet. You need to understand how to do that securely. Um, a third point I'd like to do under dil diligence is now that, you know, in the past when you had your on-premise data centers, you had to go out and physically do that inventory. It wasn't very easy to understand what version of software I have, what version of hardware is out there. But when I'm in the cloud, I, you know, you can allocate what you want to spin up for servers, what you're running. So it's very easy to have a, a blueprint of what exactly you have at this moment in time. And that's something that we're seeing that people need to take advantage of in their security concerns too. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to bring up under this one is, um, we talked about this a little bit in the previous podcast too, about getting your data out. It's a, uh, you know, you spend a lot of effort to get your features, your assets up into that cloud, and, but you need to be concerned that they're a business too. They can fail, they can have, you know, problems with, you know, losing data due to power and something. So you have to have a plan in place to figure out whether I need to have a, a backup, have a mul you know multiple cloud providers, you know duplicating your services or having a way that you need to have data on premise. So that's part of the planning that you need to do as part of your due diligence here. Okay, and Don? So the second area for best practices is to manage access to your data resources. And the very first thing you should do is you should adopt multi-factor authentication. Uh, this is, this is just generally good advice whether you're doing cloud or not, uh, but as we mentioned in the threats and vulnerabilities, cloud management APIs are accessible over the internet. Right. Password credentials are easily compromised and you have no indication they've been compromised until such time as they've been used. So adding a second factor, especially for your privileged users who do management, is critically important. On a kind of side note and, and personal advice, if you use things like Gmail or OneDrive or even Facebook, you're using the cloud. And all of these services offer multi-factor authentication to you personally. So not only should you do this in your business, you should also consider doing it personally. Um, the next area is to implement a good collection of roles that provide separation of duties for managing all of your cloud resources. This sounds like straightforward everyday advice you would do in your IT data center, but you should be careful not to just replicate the roles that you have internally because the services are different. It's not unusual for people to have network admins and operating system admins and application admins. Well, you could try to translate those to the cloud, but in the cloud, everything is virtual. So the you know, it's just a matter of writing a line of code to change your networking or your hardware or whatever. So you should look across the new environment and understand what roles and respond what roles are appropriate in there. Um, the big three cloud service providers offer advice. Amazon has a publication on roles and responsibilities. So look at that and in the line of doing due diligence, understand those and then define your own set of roles and responsibilities. And the last area for managing access it will seem kind of, again, like, like an, a normal thing you would do, correctly configure and manage access on all of the services. The single largest cloud-related incident over the last year was people misconfiguring um, Amazon S3 buckets and leaving them publicly accessible on the Internet. Every cloud service has a unique set of permissions that have to be correctly configured. So you need to understand them and configure them correctly. 
so that you don't accidentally leave a collection of your data exposed to the internet. Um, so Tim? All right, so the, the third area was dealing with protecting that data. So as Don was talking about, it's about configuration management of those things. But you're specifically concerned about the data itself and the encryption of it. The data you transmit into the network that's getting it in so that you have it in there securely needs to be encrypted. Once it's on the system, you want to make sure that it's encrypted. And then when it's in use and by the applications, encryption is important. And so a lot of times we found where people, these are options that you have to select when you are putting your, your assets and your applications in place in the cloud. So you have to physically choose to do that encryption. And that's something that's, you know, a very good safe thing to do because if someone would accidentally get at access to your credentials and be able to access that data, if they don't have the keys for it, then you have you're protected or some you know, it just gives you a little bit better protection. So encryption's very important for that. Uh, the next one was dealing with um, the availability of your data. So I mentioned that earlier during the due diligence, but just understanding where your data is in your configuration, how you are using it, and what would happen if something would, you would lose some service availability. It's very important to understand how your cloud service provider, they use, implement their systems, they understand how it works. You need to have that same capability to make sure that you can always get at your data or if you need to come up with alternates to do that. And the last part in this one is dealing with deleted data. And Don did a very nice uh, diagram in the blog post that provides an example of oh, I put data up here and I, I put it in and I need to have it archived and it's backed up, but that data also goes to multiple other places in your network if you're delivering content. And the concern is being able to know where it is and if I want to get that out and removed, you have to work with that cloud service provider to have a very good understanding of how they implement things so that you are assured that you can get that data out. The last area of practice is to monitor and defend the resources that you've deployed to the cloud. Uh, a lot of people are used to having their own instrumentation on-prem and they know the data that comes from there and they know how to use it. And so a, a first pass for most people is to say, okay, I'm just going to take all my on-prem monitoring and I'm going to put it out in the cloud. Well, remember we said, you know, you gave up some responsibility to the cloud service provider. You no longer have physical visibility of what's on the physical network. You're looking at something on a virtual network. So our advice is don't start with the premise that you're just going to move all of your other stuff, despite the fact that over 70% of people who go to the cloud do exactly that. We think you should start by understanding the monitoring that the cloud service provider offers. One of the fundamental principles of cloud computing is metered service. To have metered service, you have to have instrumentation. Cloud service providers have vast instrumentation, and most of them make available to their customers all kinds of data. So look at that data and understand how to use the cloud service provider's monitoring and augment it only in places where you think you have a blind spot that you need to. The next challenge is your security situational awareness is not just your cloud infrastructure. It's all of the IT assets, no matter where they are. So the next thing you're going to have to do is find a way to combine the information you get in the cloud with the information that you gather on-prem, recognizing that it may not be an apples-to-apples -apples comparison because you're using someone else's monitoring. When you do combine them, you again need to look at What's the best place to do that combination? Should I move my on-prem data to the cloud or should I move the cloud data back out to on-prem? Uh, we've talked to some cloud service providers and they suggest that you might actually be better off moving your on-prem data into the cloud. Uh, Tim had mentioned earlier that there's a cost to moving data in and taking out and it's often asymmetric, meaning it's cheaper to move it in than it is to move it out for somewhat obvious reasons. Right. Uh, so, you know, the, the service providers are like, you know, you might pay less moving your on-prem data into the cloud. And also, you have elastic capabilities in the cloud. You can spin up all kinds of resources to do analysis and then shut them down. So it might actually be cheaper to do your analysis uh, and combination in the cloud. Uh, 
And then lastly, uh, I mentioned, you know, the cloud service provider gives you this advice. The cloud service provider is monitoring the underlying infrastructure. So whenever you have an incident, it's important to know how to collaborate and work with the cloud mm -hmm. service provider to investigate that incident. They have more information than you do. They can help you. And before you have an incident, you should work with them to understand how that incident response is going to go. Okay. Um, if a member of our audience wants to learn more about these best practices, what resources are available to them? One good source that we've used a lot is the Cloud Security Alliance. Also, Anessa is another good source that's European. So it gives you a different perspective. We've learned, and more recently, we appreciate the data privacy. They've always yes. been very much in that. So now the U.S. is starting to catch on to that, and we have those things. So we found their website was very good with that. I like looking at the SANS reading room as one that's always been very educational to help me understand what people are running into. I know, Don, you have a couple that you like to look at, too. Yeah. Uh Tim mentioned using a cloud adoption framework. Amazon has actually a very general purpose cloud adoption framework. They, they obviously published it uh, mm. to use with their service, but it is in no way um, vendor specific. And so using that, it's available, is, is a good uh, way to do things. From a managed access perspective, most of the large vendors have elaborate identity and access management capabilities. And so you should look at the documentation for those. And lastly, uh, we have a paper, uh, Best Practices in Cloud Security, that will be released soon. And you can take a look at that, and it'll have more detail on the things we've discussed here. Great. Uh, so what's next for both of you? What's the next collaboration I'm going to talk to you about? So we're looking into applying security in the hybrid multi-cloud environment and seeing that some of the, there's a lot of new services as we mentioned earlier coming out by these cloud service providers. They're not provided at all the different um, the data levels, security levels. So there's different services at different levels. And that's one thing that we want to look at is to identify well, what type of security is appropriate for this level of data. So the other thing that we've started to look at is security related to the Internet of Things, specifically use of Internet of Things within enterprises, uh, what happens when people bring their personal Internet of Things stuff into the enterprise environment, mm -hmm. and how can industrial control systems be adversely affected. And there's kind of a, a natural synergy here because a lot of Internet of Things stuff depend on back-end cloud services to work and the sharing of information from those personal sensors or other sensors out to the cloud creates an interesting challenge. So we've just begun looking into this area. Well, I'll look forward to having both of you back sometime to talk about those topics once, uh, once you've done some more work. Uh, I'd like to thank both of you for joining me today to talk about this work. Uh, Tim and Don recently co-authored a blog post outlining best practices in cloud security. You can read that at insights.sei.cmu.edu. Click on the Author tab and search under FATS, F-A-A-T-Z. Also, please know that we will provide links to all of the resources mentioned in today's podcast in the transcript. This podcast is available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu forward slash podcasts on Carnegie Mellon University's iTunes site and the SEI's YouTube channel. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.